Permanent diagnostic trouble codes are starting to be used as a pass-fail criteria for vehicle emission inspections. It does depend on the state that you're in and the emissions laws. The information I'm going to cover right now actually comes off of the California Bureau of Automotive Repair website, which has got some really good generic information on what are permanent diagnostic codes. So, permanent diagnostic trouble codes are very similar to regular diagnostic co uh, codes. However, unlike regular DTCs, they cannot be reset by disconnecting the vehicle's battery or cleared using an onboard diagnostic scan tool. The only way to clear a PDTC is to fix the underlying problem with the vehicle that originally caused the PDTC and its corresponding DTC to set. Then allow the vehicle sufficient drive time to rerun the monitor that identified the problem in the first place. When the monitor runs without identifying a problem, the PDTC will clear itself. When will PDTCs be included as part of the smog check inspection failure criteria? Again, remember, this is for California. It varies from state to state. But starting July 1st, 2019, the presence of PDTCs will be considered in, in determining the vehicle smog inspection uh, result. Again, that's California. So starting in July 2019. Why are PDTCs being included in the smog check program? Unplugging the vehicle's battery or using a scan tool or technique sometimes used to clear OBD information for a vehicle that has illuminated malfunction indicator light in an attempt to hide the fact that the vehicle is malfunctioning. Some of these vehicles can pass a smog check inspection before the vehicle can re-identify the underlying problem that set the malfunction indicator light and DTC. This can have a dramatic impact on air quality and decrease the effectiveness of the smog check program. Although the use of readiness monitors reduces the chances of passing a smog check inspection with an active DTC, PDTCs can further ensure emission control systems are working correctly. So how are PDTCs going to be used as part of the smog check program? Upon implementation, vehicles that have PDTCs stored in the OBD system will fail the smog check inspection regardless of whether the malfunction indicator light is illuminated. If a PDTC is stored, it indicates that the OBD system has not yet successfully verified that a previously detected emission-related malfunction is no longer active. So the important takeaway here is that even if the malfunction indicator light is not illuminated, if there is a PDTC um, in the uh, memory of the uh, ECU, the vehicle will fail the smog inspection. Again, that's California, but you can pretty much bet this is will be extended to um, many other states in the country. Which model year vehicles will include PDTCs as part of the smog check inspection? The new tri criteria will apply to model year 2010 and newer vehicles that support PDTCs. It appears that um, the uh, uh, PCMs in uh, vehicles starting around the 2010 model year were capable of storing permanent diagnostic trouble codes. Again, they're not always used as a uh, criteria to fail a vehicle during an emission inspection, but in this case, it looks like in California, they started using this uh, in 2019. Are there circumstances under which a PDTC will not cause a vehicle to fail a smog check inspection? Yes, PDTCs will be ignored if the vehicle has completed at least 15 warm-up cycles and has been driven at least 200 miles since its OBD information was last cleared. What is a warm-up cycle? A warm-up cycle means driving a vehicle so the engine coolant temperature rises by at least 40 degrees Fahrenheit after the engine is started and reached at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Why will PDCs be ignored when the vehicle has completed 15 warm-up cycles and been driven 200 miles since the codes were cleared? The time to complete 15 warm-up cycles and drive 200 miles is reasonable for the vehicles to complete the self-diagnostic test. In fact, most vehicles will complete the self-diagnost well before this maximum limit's reached. The 15-200 limit is being established to prevent undue inconvenience to motorists who are trying to comply with the smog check program requirements. 
but are having trouble getting specific monitors to run to complete and ready for testing. From my experience, I have found that depending on the uh, permanent diagnostic trouble code that is being set, it can clear a lot faster than 15 warm-up cycles and 200 miles. Um, again, it just depends on what that code is. So what I'd like to do now is spend a little bit of time on the car. Let's set a uh, permanent diagnostic cr trouble code and see what it looks like and see what it takes to clear it. We're looking at a 2022 Chevy Traverse. What I want to do is actually set a, uh, a permanent code in this vehicle um, and let's see what it looks like. Uh, right now you can see there's no check engine light on, which is good. If we take a look at my scan tool, I think um, we'll take a look if we look at fault codes, DTC display, and we have no trouble codes uh, right now, so everything is clear. I'm Right now I'm on the manufacturer specific side of the scan tool, um, so I went in by VIN. But let's look at the, the generic side also, the OBD2 side of the scan tool, and make sure there's nothing there. Right now we're looking at the OBD2 side, uh, generic side of the scan tool. And if we take a look at fault codes, also it reads uh, no fault code. So what I want to do now is I want to set a code. I'm going to disconnect the mass airflow sensor. We'll try to start the car. Let's see if we can trigger something. So I've disconnected the mass airflow sensor connector. Let's start it up and see what happens. Okay, this is a push to start car. So again, our mass airflow sensor connector is disconnected. I'll hit the push to start button. And it didn't seem to like that. Let's do it one more time. Okay. So let's see if we have any codes. So I'm now again on the uh, manufacturer specific side of the scan tool. If I look for uh, DTCs and I'm seeing, uh, looks like a P0097 intake air temp sensor circuit low voltage. Here's intake air pressure measurement system, not plausible. Intake air humidity sensor, intake air temp sensor, high voltage barometric pressure sensor, uh, another barometric pressure sensor. So we have quite a few codes right now. And again, the connector is still disconnected. Engine's not running. Let's look at the uh, generic side of the tool. We're now on the generic OBD2 side of the tool. And if we go into read fault code, we see uh, quite a bit. Uh, P0 codes are uh, generic codes. So um, intake air temp sensor, uh, intake air pressure measurement system, humidity sensor, intake air temp sensor circuit, barometric pressure sensor circuit performance, and barometric pressure sensor circuit high. So it looks like we have six codes, but notice they're all pending. So these are all pending codes. Um, they would need to see one more fault um, during a drive cycle to set a permanent code. But I'm going to try, I'm going to plug the sensor back in. Um, I'm going to then start the car up again. Let's see what we've got. The sensor's plugged back in. We're going to start the car. Car starts right up. And it looks like we have a check engine light. So let's see what we have now if we check the scan tool. So engine running, looking at the, uh, in the manufacturer specific side of the scan tool, if we hit DTCs, uh, again we've got intake air temp sensor, circuit low voltage, uh, intake air pressure measurement system, multiple sensors not plausible, intake air humidity sensor circuit low, intake air temperature sensor circuit high, barometric pressure sensor circuit, so same as before. Um, they're not listed as pending now. Um, and again, our, our check engine light is still on. Let's take a look at the generic side of the scan tool. So we're on the generic side or OBD2 side of the scan tool now. If we check 
alt codes, um, intake air temp sensor, circuit low, humidity sensor, circuit low. Notice these are current codes now, uh, not pending, barometric pressure sensor, intake air temp sensor, uh, again, intake air pressure measurement, but we've got a pending for the humidity sensor circuit, intake air temp circuit, uh, high bank one pending, barometric pressure sensor circuit range performance pending, and one more barometric pressure sensor circuit high pending. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to see if I can erase the codes. Let's see what's left over after we do that. So we're back on the manufacturer-specific side of the scan tool. Um, if I click clear fault codes, do you want to clear all emission-related uh, DTCs and freeze frame, etc., etc.? And I'm going to say yes. This is clear fault code completed. Okay. So now I'm going to read the fault code. Let's see what we get. says no trouble code system is normal so we see no fault codes at this time but again we're on the Chevrolet manufacturer specific side let's take a look at the generic side before we look at the generic side of the scan tool we can see also that the engines running but our uh, mill light uh, manif um, uh, malfunction indicator light or check engine light is not on so it went off when we cleared the codes on the manufacturer specific side of the scan tool I'm still on the generic OBD2 side. Uh, again, my, my check engine light is out, out. But if I try clearing fault codes, let's see what happens. Uh, it says it will kill, clear all emissions related diagnostic information. Um, if I say yes, DTC has been cleared. Yes. But if I go back and read fault codes, I still have all these permanent codes. Again, these permanent codes are going to need drive cycles and time uh, before they'll go away. Uh, I should say drive cycles and miles before they go away. Um, you can't uh, erase them by disconnecting the battery. You can't erase them by uh, using a scan tool, even a factory scan tool. The, the vehicle itself has to be fixed. Again, it has to go through a certain number of cycles uh, without seeing any type of a diagnostic code, then it will erase the permanent codes. And that's really the only way you can get rid of them. The car has to do it itself. If I go back to the manufacturer specific part of the scan tool, even though I still have permanent code showing on the generic side, no trouble code system normal on the manufacturer specific side. So it just also shows the importance of using the generic side of the scan tool also, just the manufacturer side. So in this case, if all I use is the manufacturer side, I wouldn't see those permanent codes. But on the generic side, I do. I just drove around the block to see what would happen. Uh, check codes again. I still have the permanent codes. I did this once before, um, set a mass airflow sensor code, um, and it ended up taking about six drive cycles and about 40 miles uh, until the permanent codes would go away. So it's not necessarily going to take 15 drive cycles and 150 miles. It really just depends on the code. But again, the most important thing is that the uh, vehicle has to clear itself. You can't do it. Uh, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.